All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at lesson 4-7, which is all about um, right triangle trigonometry and using right triangle trigonometry to solve some word problems. So there's some vocabulary that we need to be familiar with. So let's look at some of the, some of the vocabulary first. So first, we have this idea of angle of elevation. So angle of elevation, you can write this down in your notes, is the angle formed when you look straight ahead and you must raise or elevate your eyes to see the top of the object. So in this little diagram here, we have this dog on the ground, and he's hearing this bird chirp up in a tree. And so when that dog looks straight at the tree and then looks up at the bird, that angle that's formed would be the angle of elevation. So again, it's important to recognize that that angle of elevation is formed with the eye level looking straight across, uh, not necessarily at the ground. So if it's a person that's looking up at something, you'd look, uh, it would be the angle that's formed if they were to look straight across and then look up at whatever they're looking at. So that's the angle of elevation. Then we have this other angle called the angle of depression. The angle of depression is formed when you look straight ahead and you must lower or depress your eyes to see the object below. So on the flip side of the situation, in the diagram on the left, you have the bird that's sitting up in the tree that's chirping away. And if that bird were to look straight across and then look down at this dog that all of a sudden starts barking at him, that angle that's formed would be the angle of depression. So angle of elevation goes up is the angle that's formed when you're looking up at something. Angle depression is the angle that's formed when you look down at something. An easy way to remember that is when you're depressed, sometimes you'll just drop your head down. And so angle of depression is that angle that's formed when you drop your head down and look down. So those are our two angles. Now there's something unique about these two angles, the angle of depression and angle of elevation. So let's remember about what we know about geometry. So if that bird were to look straight out and that dog were to look straight across, those two lines are going to be parallel to each other. So both of those eye levels will be parallel to each other. So in geometry, if you um, connect those two lines, let's call the transversal, so that would be the dog looking at the bird, the bird looking at the dog, that line that's formed there creates the two angles, and those angles are called alternate interior angles that are equal in measure. So what that means is that the angle of depression is the same angle that's formed as the angle of elevation which will sometimes be used in some of our problems. So if you're creating a triangle, um, like if it's an airplane that's taking off or landing, uh, sometimes the diagram that you make, the angle that they give you might be outside the right triangle, in which case you would do the, um, the opposite angle, the opposite interior angle would be the uh, equivalent angle. And you'll see that come up, like I said, in some examples here. So let's look at some examples. So first off, it says from a point, 340 feet away from the base of a building, the angle of elevation of the top of the building is 65 degrees. How tall is the building? All right, so for these problems, it's important that you create a diagram. Now, when I create, create a diagram, I make it specific to the situation, and I would do the same thing, because that's where sometimes a lot of confusion can be cleared up, is if you actually make a picture, not just make a triangle. Here's what I mean by that. So let's start by uh, drawing, so we have a building. Okay, so here's my building. So here's some windows. All right, so there's my building. From a point 340 feet away from the base of a building, you can be as specific as you want here. So this would be my triangle. And this would be the distance down here would be 340 feet away. From the base of the building, the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 65 degrees. So the angle of elevation is for, formed when you look up. So that means if someone's down here at the ground and then looks up at the top of the building, this is the angle of elevation. So that's 65 degrees. How tall is the building? So this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to figure out the height there. So we're dealing with the right triangle trig. So remember with right triangle trig, we can, right triangle trig, we can use... Those ratios, the so ka, toa. So what I like to do is I like to look at, okay, so based on the information that I'm giving here, what information do I know? So this is the angle, the 65 degree angle. That's the angle that we're going to be using. So the 640, that's going to be adjacent to that angle. And this is opposite the angle. So the ratio that uses the opposite and the adjacent sides would be tangent. So to find x, I'm going to do the tangent, 65 degrees, 
equals the opposite leg, which is x, over the adjacent leg, which is 340. Now what I want you to remember here is we don't care about solving for x right now. What I want to do is I want to get rid of the fraction. So to get rid of the fraction, I multiply both sides by 340. So whatever's in the denominator, that's what you multiply by. So by doing so, it does solve for x in this situation. And so on the, on the left side, we have 340 times tangent is 65 degrees. Now one little thing to be sure of, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode right now. If it's not in degree mode, you're going to get the wrong answer. So make sure that you go through the process on your calculator to make sure it's in degree mode. So when you type that in, so I don't want you to just write this down, I want you to make sure that your calculator is in the right mode. When you type that in, you should get something approximately 729 feet, which is round to the nearest foot here. If it doesn't say what to round to, uh, it, a good rule of measure is look at your um, the story problem. If the story problem has decimals, round it to the same decimal. If it doesn't have decimals, you can round it to the nearest integer. So in this case, uh, 340 feet away from the base of a building. So we can just say that the height of the building would be 729 feet. All right, let's look at another one. All right, the angle of elevation from the buoy to the top of the Barnegat Bay Lighthouse, 130 feet above the surface of the water, is 5 degrees. Find the distance x from the base of the lighthouse to the buoy. All right. So a lighthouse is usually on the top of a cliff, so I'm going to do that here. Okay, so here's my cliff. And here's my lighthouse. All right. And then you have a buoy that's going to be in water. So I'm going to have some water down here. Make my little floating buoy down here. All right. So it says the angle of elevation from the buoy to the top of the lighthouse, 130 feet. So the, the triangle that we're going to create is going to look like this. Whoops. There we go. So there's our right triangle. Okay, so now let's put in what we know. So the top of the lighthouse is 130 feet above the surface of the white water. So this is 130 feet. And it says the um, angle that's formed, the angle of elevation that's formed is 5 degrees. So that's going to be 5 degrees down here. So what are we trying to find? We're find, trying to find the distance from the base of the lighthouse to the buoy. So we'll say the base of the cliff here, because I guess maybe the lighthouse wasn't on the cliff. Uh, but we're trying to find this distance down here. So I'm going to call that x. All right. So now we want to figure out, well, how do those sides relate to that right angle? Or the, or the angle, the theta, 5 degrees, the angle of elevation. So this side here would be our adjacent leg. This side here is going to be our opposite leg again. So now we're going to use the tangent function again. So it will be the tangent of 5 degrees equals the opposite, which is 130, over the adjacent leg, which is x. Now remember what I said last time. I said I'm not so much concerned about solving for the variable as I am getting rid of the fraction. So in this situation, if you ever have x in the denominator, do not divide both sides by 130. Do not multiply both sides by 130. Don't focus on trying to get solve for x right now. What we're trying to focus on is getting rid of the fraction. So to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So now I have x times the tangent of, oops, that's 5 degrees, equals 130. Now I can solve for x. So to solve for x, I would divide both sides by the tangent of 5 degrees. Now, I do want to go back to what we did at the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to erase some things here. So I want you to look to see what changed from the original problem in yellow to what I have now in orange. And basically what happened is these two switched locations. So remember a little trick that you can use is if you ever do have a variable in the denominator, to save yourself some work, now you could do what I just did, multiply both sides by x and then divide by the tangent or cosine, whatever the angle is, uh, to get the x by itself. You could do that. Otherwise, if you recognize and remember this trick, you can just swap those two. So you take 
the x that's in the denominator and whatever is on the other side of the equal sign, the entire thing, not just the five degrees, the entire thing, tangent of five degrees, swap those two pieces, and then you can get your answer quicker. So now I could take 130 divided by tangent of five degrees, do that on my calculator, and I get 1,000, uh, we'll say 1,486 feet. We round the nearest foot. All right. So I want you guys to try one on your own now. So this one, it says, a wire stretches from the top of a vertical pole to a point on level ground 16 feet from the base of the pole. If the wire makes an angle of 62 degrees with the ground, find the height of the pole and the length of the wire. So I want you guys to pause the video, and I want you to try this one. Now remember, there's two parts to this problem, so it doesn't matter what order you do it in. Uh, but one of the things you're going to try to find is the height of the pole. And then the other piece you're going to try to find is the length of the wire. So I want you guys to create your own diagram for that. Use what you need to be able to solve for those two lengths. And then hit play when you're ready to check to see if you did it correctly. All right. Let's see how you did here. So there's our diagram. So hopefully you have everything labeled correctly. If you got the wrong answers, double check. Make sure two things. Make sure that one... Your diagram is labeled correctly, and two, that you're using degree mode. As far as a quiz or a test is concerned, you will be graded uh, first on your diagram. So if there is a mistake on your diagram, I will grade your answers based on the diagram you draw. Uh, so you're not going to lose all the points just because you set up your diagram incorrectly. But obviously you want as many points as possible, so it is important to get that diagram done correctly so you don't lose any of those uh, little points. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. I do want to talk about one more thing here. So let me uh, bring up another slide. So let's look at this one, because this is one of those problems where um, when we create our triangle, the angle that they give us is going to be outside the triangle. So I want to show you what to do with that. So here in this scenario, and you don't have to write this down in your notes if you don't want to. If you want to just look, and then uh, see, because we won't do this one to completion, I'll just show you how you'd set this one up and what you'd be trying to find. An airplane is at an altitude of 15,000 feet. It begins begins its descent to land at an angle of depression of 8 degrees. At this angle, how far from the airport is the plane? All right. So the distance that we're trying to find is a distance along the ground. So that would be the horizontal distance, not, oh, I'll show you what I mean by that, the angle distance. All right, so let's draw an airplane here. Okay, so there's my airplane. And it's flying at an altitude of 15,000 feet. Altitude means your vertical height. Okay, so this is 15,000 feet. The airport is where it's trying to land at. Is down here. Okay, now when it says an angle of depression of 8 degrees, Angle depression is formed, remember, when you look straight out, when you look at, when you have your eye level looking straight out and then look down at an object. So, whoops, what happened there? So, this would be 8 degrees. This is not your 8 degree angle. Okay, that would be wrong. Okay, you're going to get a really weird answer if that happens. All right. Well, remember, angle of elevation and angle of depression are the same. So, that angle that I just wrote down there, that 8 degrees, that is outside my triangle. So I have two options. I could either go down here and say that this angle is 8 degrees, because those two would be the same. Or if you wanted to, you could also say, because remember, these two would form a right angle. So you could say that this angle up here, inside that angle, would be 82 degrees, because 90 minus um, 8 would be 82. But otherwise, personally, I just like making the angle of elevation the same as the angle of depression, so I get another angle inside that triangle. So then the side that we're trying to find is the distance along the ground. Okay, so we're not trying to find this one. That's not what we're trying to find. We'd be trying to find the horizontal distance to the airport from where the plane's at. So in this situation, if you were to do it, we would use a tangent. Again, you're going to use tangent a lot for these. Why would that be? Well, because there's a lot of times where we're not going to be able to measure the hypotenuse just because of the way the story problem is set up where we can measure things along the ground, we can measure vertical distances, but it's hard to measure uh, that angle in the, or that side that would be kind of in the air like that. Um, 
The only situation that I can think of is if we knew the length of a wire that was tied to something, well then that would be the hypotenuse and you would have that. But otherwise you're going to find yourself using tangent a lot for these problems, which again happens in this problem. So we won't go through and solve this one. I just wanted you to see how you'd set this up if you have an angle outside of your right triangle. So good luck now as you work on your assignment.